The gentleman we'll cover today had two Super Bowl wins and five Super Bowl appearances. This Hall of Famer's ideas and knowledge led to changes league-wide. I'm Dana Jones, and with decades worth of Cowboys memorabilia, we have so much to show you on From the Vault, 60 Years of Cowboys History. of Cowboys history is brought to you by Lincoln. Thank you for joining us. Again, I'm Dana Jones, and I'm joined by Mary Padian from Storage Wars. Mary, is it true you're a Cowboys fan? <laughs> oh, yeah. I grew up here in Dallas, and me and my brothers would watch it all the time, and still do. Love it. <laughs> Also joining us is Jonathan Thorne. He is the archivist for the Dallas Cowboys. Now, Jonathan, your profession is somewhat a rarity of its own, correct? It is. It's a bit of a rare profession, especially in sports. Um, but my main role is to be the champion and guardian of Cowboys history. Love it. Each episode, Jonathan's going to unveil an original item from the Cowboys vault. Mary and I actually had the opportunity to tour the, the vault, and it is massive. So without further ado, Jonathan, are you ready to unveil today's item? Yes, this is Tech Schramm's Hall of Fame jacket. It's awesome. Earned this in 1991 as the Cowboys' fourth Hall of Fame in Shrining. So I know for sure that Hall of Fame jackets are not commonly resold, if ever. So how did the Cowboys come in possession of this? So this one uh, was with the Schramm family for many years, uh, and then they donated it to us for display. Uh, Tech's always wanted to be accessible to the fans. So I actually had the opportunity to talk to his daughter, Candy, recently, and she said, I found this really interesting, their phone number was always listed, meaning anyone could call them, and it was to the point what you made. Being accessible to the fans was of utmost, utmost importance to text. Um, I just always found that really interesting because that's just something, right. no one lists their phone number. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even, like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And no one's calling me. But if we get back to the jacket, now, Jonathan, I've heard that these jackets can take up to two months to complete per jacket. What additional information do you have about the attention to detail that goes into these? Sure, they're amazingly amazing the way they're made. They've been made they're by- amazingly amazing. <laughs> amazingly amazing. They've been Love made it. by Hagar <laughs> since 1978. Um, you know, from the fabrics to the crest, to the buttons and the lining, you know, every attention is paid to every detail of these jackets. This one is one of the older, more original styles. Um, the current ones, are a little more customized. They actually have the Enshrinee's name, uh, their Enshrinee number, and their class inside of the jacket. Nice. So I know that Tex was with the Cowboys for nearly 30 years. So can you tell us about the Cowboys' victories during that time? Sure, it was an amazing run. We're talking about 20 consecutive winning wow. seasons. It's unbelievable in football. Um, you know, Tex was, he was responsible for so much of the day-to-day -day operations of the club. Uh, you know, he was signing the players and the talent on the field. Uh, I mean, he even hired Tom Landry, you know. Um, so, you know, all of those things, he's just as responsible for those wins as any player or coach. So I know that Tex had a background in broadcast, therefore understood the importance of captivating an audience. Jonathan, can you give us any examples of how he was able to accomplish that? Sure, I think the biggest one that stands out is the birth of the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. You know, in the 60s, we had, you know, utilized high school cheerleaders um, and cheer squads. But by the early 70s, we were going to Super Bowls, won a Super Bowl, we were opening Texas Stadium in 1971. And Tex envisioned a really world-class, well-polished uh, cheer squad to match that of America's team. So would it be safe to say that his innovative way of thinking is what led him to receive his jacket? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there, there's been a lot of great GMs in the history of the league. Tex was really special. He spent 25 years um, as the chairman of the NFL's competition committee. So he brought us instant replay, uh, putting microphones on the referees so you can hear what they're saying, um, you know, putting the game clock on the scoreboard. Really did a lot to modernize the game. 
instant replay. I feel like that's like, yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine the game anymore. Like, you know, without right. having that, that's crazy. Um, on what receiving the jacket meant to Tech Shram, his daughter Candy said that to him, it validated all the hard work that he put into the Cowboys and the NFL. He felt appreciated in so many ways by the variety of individuals that the voting consists of. She said that his mind was always concerned with how to make the football experience better for fans. And then she added, with that said, he would have absolutely loved AT&T Stadium, especially the star, for its accessibility to the fans. Jonathan, is there anything else that we need to know that maybe we don't even know about Tech Shram? Sure, I think something really interesting is he was actually hired in 1959, not 1960. So he was brought in to help us get everything ready to go uh, in case we were going to get our expansion franchise. So he's truly one of the founders of the Dallas Cowboys. Love it. Okay, so while this item is not for sale, but just for fun, Mary, from a collector's yeah. perspective, what do you think an item like this could be valued at? Well, there have been two Hall of Fame jackets ever in the history of football to be sold on the online marketplace. In 1999, Chipley Trippy sold for 2600 and then in 2010, Ricky Jackson sold for over 6000 So with all of his contributions to the Cowboys and this jacket being an original, not a replacement, I think easily it would sell for at least 7500 starting at an auction. It's a pretty good starting point, yeah. I think. Well, I definitely want to thank Jonathan and Mary for their time. I want to give a very special thank you to Tech Shram's family for their part in this episode of From the Vault, 60 Years of Cowboys History, brought to you by Lincoln. I'm Dana Jones. We'll see you next time. From the Vault, 60 Years of Cowboys History was brought to you by Lincoln.